போடுங்க ஸோ ஸோ இன் திஸ் லைட் யூ கேன் சி த நார்மல் டூ டி செக்ஷன் ஆஃப் த செஸ்ட் வால் ஹியர் யூ கேன் சி த ட்ரைக்கியா இட் பைஃபர்கேட்ஸ் இன்டு டூ தென் இட் லேட்டர் டிவைட்ஸ் இன்டு ஸ்மால் ப்ராங்கோல்ஸ் என்டரிங் இன் டு த லங்ஸ் அண்ட் வாட் டு சி ஹியர் இஸ் த ரிப்ஸ் பிகாஸ் டூ டி செக்ஷன் யூஆர் சீங் லேட்டர் அண்ட் இன் த மிடில் தேர் இஸ் மீடாஸ்டம் அண்ட் லோவர் திஸ் இஸ் த டயஃபம் விச் இஸ் அ மேஜர் இன்ஸ்பிரேட்ரி மசில் Uh, as you know the inspiration is always an active process whereas expiration is passive so what happens during inspiration is the inspiratory muscles contract that is diaphragm when it contracts it pulls the lungs down so that the lungs expands in this long tail direction so that air enters from the mouth or the nasal cavity into the both lungs where the gas exchange take place where the gas exchange take place okay so and during expiration this as it is an passive process the lung which has expanded during expiration recoils so that the expired air goes out through mouth into the atmosphere during expiration there no uh, it is a passive process so no muscle need to contract during expiration but there are exceptions where during some disease process expiration can also become a uh, act, active process so so just imagine if you are inflating a balloon the air uh, to half or a full volume the same, same size balloon but a thicker plastic if you are inflating just imagine you need to put more pressure you need to put more force to inflate this balloon now this is the one scenario second scenario if i fill this balloon with a small amount of water and ask you to inflate you need to put more force or pressure to inflate this balloon compared to when filled with only air similarly what happens in this uh, pathological conditions is the lungs or the alveoli gets filled with the fluid so normally during inspiration where air could inflate the or air could distend the alveoli when they are filled with the fluid or because of inflam infection or inflammation there is a inflammatory fluid the lung expansion is affected so th- you need to put more pressure or you need to put more effort to expand this lungs so this conditions affect the compliance of the lungs compliance is the distance distensible capacity of the lungs because they are filled with the fluid they are not able to expand properly you need to put more pressure to open up this alveoli so this technique is used and this is a basic concept behind applying the positive pressure ventilation so uh, coming to the respiratory failure when you coined this term normally the function of the respiratory system is help in gas exchange to oxygenate and wash out the carbon dioxide so when the respiratory system is not able to do this two function we we'll label it as a respiratory failure there are two type actually four type but for practical purpose we will discuss about only two type 1 respiratory failure where oxygenation is affected there is no effect on co2 co2 is normal or low in this condition but oxygen is also low whereas type 2 respiratory failure both carbon dioxide and oxygen are affected where oxygen is low and carbon dioxide levels are high in this condition you label it as type 2 respiratory failure now coming to positive pressure ventilation as we discussed in the last slide because the compliance of the lung is affected you need to apply more pressure to ventilate the or to push air into the lungs historically if you see it is the negative pressure ventilator which has came into existence first it is during 19th century during the polio epidemic where the person is enclosed in the big chamber and applying the negative pressure to cause a lung expansion but later uh, about a few years later um, an anesthesiologist from the denmark noticed that who are those who are having a tracheostomy when they are doing the bag and mask ventilation through the tracheostomy their oxygenation is better and it reduces mortality in this polio patient uh, so this technique is or this principle is utilized in developing this positive pressure ventilators so of uh, first the negative pressure ventilators were started later the positive pressure ventilators came into existence again in this positive pressure ventilation you can apply this positive pressure in two ways either invasive or non invasive methods you coined the term invasive when you have intubated the patient and you are applying this pressure through the endotracheal tube which is called as invasive mechanical ventilation 
but when you are applying this positive pressure through a mask or a nav mask you call in the term non invasive ventilation so there is no requirement of any endotracheal tube in this patient you are applying the positive pressure through a mask so what is the effect of this positive pressure ventilation and respiratory failure so it reduces the work of breathing because you are applying pressure it helps in releasing the distress this pressure reaches the alveoli it distends the alveoli it helps in the gas exchange yeah? it increases the functional residual capacity and improves the oxygenation at same time this positive pressure ventilation are beneficial to left side of the heart especially patients who are in heart failure this positive pressure ventilation reduces the stress on the left side of the heart so these are some beneficial effects of positive pressure ventilation we we'll start with a brief scenario we have a 45 year old gentleman who presented with history of fever for 3 days which is associated with the shortness of breath and cough and the shortness of breath initially he was able on which was initially on exertion now he was not able to breathe adequately even at rest background he is a known hypertensive and copd patient uh, he also complains about similar history one year back on examination in er he is noticed to be hypoxic where saturation is less than 90 on room air is tachypneic respiratory rate is more than 80 and tachycardic heart rate is more than 100 and also using axillary muscles initial abg shows ph of 7.2 tco2 of 60 pao2 of 50 bicarb 26 base excess plus 1 so this fits into acute respiratory acidosis so the er finish physician has started him on oxygen supplementation because he is hypoxic at 5 liters per minute so with 5 liters he is maintaining saturation at 93% and he shifted to icu on arrival to icu the critical care physician advised uh, nurse to start the niv so as he was instructed in, as the nurse was instructed he told him to keep the equipment ready so what all you need to keep ready we will discuss in the coming slides first coming to the indications where uh, you need to use this niv there are you can divide into acute and chronic conditions in acute condition where niv is helpful is acute exacerbation of copd and pulmonary edema these two indications there is strong recommendation whereas following extubation to prevent respiratory failure you can use this niv and in post operative conditions where the patient is not able to maintain saturation and immunocompromised patients patients who are opted for palliative care or chest trauma patients this can be used but not good recommendation for this coming to chronic condition where this niv is helpful is uh, sleep apnea patients or obesity hypoventilation stable copd patient or patient with neuromuscular disease so these are the conditions where the niv is indicated <coughs> coming to the equipment as the nurse was instructed to keep the equipment ready so what all equipment you need to uh, keep ready for starting an niv first ventilator circuit mask heat and moisture exchanger as a passive humidifier and protective skin covering so in the coming slide we'll discuss about each uh, equipment so here you can see a ventilator and this light projects the ventilator with the ventilator which you see on the left side is a icu ventilator whereas which you see on the right side are the portable ventilator or a bipap machine Uh, there is some difference between the icu and the uh, portable ventilators normally in acute condition you use this icu ventilators only it is not advisable to use the portable ventilators in acute conditions like pulmonary edema or acute exacerbation of copd and as you can see here this icu ventilator has got both inspiratory limb and the expiratory port so you need to put, uh, apply double limb two limb circuits when you are using the icu ventilator and with icu ventilator you can give precise oxygen delivery and the oxygen delivery when you are using icu ventilator is usually in termed as fio2 it ranges from 21 to 100% whereas when you are using the portable ventilator the oxygen supplementation is usually in liters 1 liter 2 liter 6 liters liter whereas in icu it is fio2 precise oxygen delivery 
and uh, portable ventilator you can see here there is only one port so you cannot attach the dual limb circuit to this so you need to use only single limb circuit when you are using the portable ventilators and most of these portable ventilators have inbuilt humidifier also as you can see here this the white one towards the right of this or here you can see it is filled with uh, uh, deionized water so it helps in humidification so coming to the circuit, you can see here two types of circuits. One is a dual limb circuit. See here, there is a dual limb circuit. There is one limb is for inspiratory port and another one is for expiratory port. So both this uh, move towards the Y junction where this is connected to the NIV mass. And the side you can see this trap is are called as water traps where any water vapor which gets condensed in this uh, circuit will collect in this water traps. So these dual limb circuits are used only with the ICO ventilator, not with the portable ventilator. And the one which you see on the right, this is a single limb circuit, which are used with the portable ventilator. And uh, if you see in this image, uh, in this uh, the image below is Using this is for ICU ventilator with a dual limb circuit. So what happens during inspiration is the air goes from the ventilator towards the patient through the mass, and during expiration, the air moves towards ventilator through this expiratory limb. So in ICU ventilator, there are inspiratory limb and expiratory limb. Whereas in portable ventilator, there is only one port. You can attach only single limb circuit. So during inspiration, air flows from the ventilator to the patient through the mask, but there is no expiratory limb in this circuit. So what happens during expiration is the air during expiration is vented out through this expiratory wall or expiratory port, as you can see in this circuit. So uh, in portable ventilator, the expiratory limb, uh, the circuit, the single limb circuit usually have a exhalation port to vent out the expired gases. And coming to the mass, as you can see in these images, there are four different types of mass uh, with which you can apply the NIV. The one on the extreme left is a full face mass. And uh, this is a side angle view of full face mass where it covers uh, entire face from forehead to below the chin and goes along the in front of the ears. And through this port, the circuit is connected from which the positive pressure is applied to the patient. And the middle, you can see the second type of mass, which is oronasal mass. As the name implies, it covers the nose and the mouth. So on the top, it goes over the bridge of the nose and beneath it extends till the chin. So this is a side view of the oronasal mass. And these straps will go beyond the patient head and pass over forehead and this applied to the mask, which helps in tightly securing the mask to the face. And the third type of mask is a nasal mask. As you can see, it covers only the nose through which the positive pressure is applied. So uh, in this, the mouth is the free. So oral hygiene is maintained when you're using oral nasal mask. This compared to oral nasal mask, this nasal mask is better tolerated by the patient. It is comfortable to the patient as the mouth is free, they can communicate, they can have some drinks also. And the fourth type of mask, which is the helmet mask, as you can see the entire head, neck is covered with this mask and it is held in this place tightly with the help of straps, which go beneath the shoulder and apply to the mask. And you see these two circuits connected to the mask will apply the positive pressure in this. The entire head and neck is covered in this mask. So when you are applying such high pressures, the patients experience some amount of discomfort can cause claustrophobia also. But among all these masks, the oral nasal mask and nasal mask are most commonly used in the routine practice. These are available in three sizes, small, medium, and large. So uh, this slide projects uh, oral nasal mask only, as you can see uh, in this, uh, this uh, oronasal mask has additional port for attaching a 
nebulizer or the called as bronco mask this how actually or oronasal mask looks like but here you can see in this extreme left this port this circuit has additional port for attaching the nebulizer so patients with asthma or COPD exacerbation when you are applying niv normally when you want to give nebulizations you need to disconnect the mask and uh, give the nebulization but with this port you can apply this nebulizer jet nebulizer and give nebula nebulizations there no need to disconnect niv mask when you are using this uh, bronco mask so this is one variant of oronasal mask and coming to the dressings as i said when you are applying a positive pressure to avoid leaks around the mask you need to apply it tightly only way, then the positive pressure is adequately delivered to the patient so when you are applying such a uh, when you are applying the tightly to the facial structure there can be pressure injuries over the face to prevent this you need to apply some dressings there are usually hydrocolloid dressings available and other types are usually silicone or a gel type of uh, dressings are available these are to prevent the pressure injuries so in the coming uh, last slides we have discussed what all equipment you need to keep ready the ventilator now you need to so if it is the patient is in icu then you have to use the icu ventilator whereas if the patient is ventilating in a, a room or in the ward you can use a portable ventilator so you need to the precise you need to have clarity which ventilator you need to keep ready along with that circuit a dual limb circuit or a single limb circuit and also the mask which type of mask and usually in oronasal or nasal mask are most commonly used nasal masks are used for a chronic conditions like patient with osa or uh, obesity hyperventilation when they are advised to use about 16 to 18 hours per day is usually this nasal mask uh, is being advised to them because it is better tolerated and accepted by the patient compared to oral nasal mask and about the humidifier and also dressings which we have discussed and coming to settings i will not go into uh, depth of, about this setting but i will just tell about the terminology what all this uh, terminology used in this or applied in this ventilator uh, uh, coming to icu ventilator what to see is uh, one setting about a mode so when you are using icu ventilator niv is usually applied for the patient those who are having spontaneous breath only so mode commonly utilized is pressure support or a peep control modes are also an option for using control modes is also there but usually it is not advisable to use a control mode with the uh, niv if patient is such bad or if not able to trigger breaths or is having respiratory arrest you need to put on uh, you need to ventilate the patient with the invasive mode like intubation and mechanical ventilation so only when the patient is triggering breaths and spontaneously you can it's better to use this niv option with icu ventilator and so you can see a setting as peep which is a positive end expiratory pressure commonly applied usually it is 10% of the body weight if i am applying a peep of 5 the pressure is maintained both during inspiration and expiration and the next setting you can see is the pressure support pressure support is the extra support which i am providing during the inspiration only this has nothing to do during expiration you can see about fio2 uh, as I said, you can adjust the oxygen requirement in FIO2 in ICU ventilator. It ranges from 21 to 100. You cannot, so the least amount of FIO2 you can use, 21. You cannot go below this. You cannot give a zero FIO2 because when applying FIO2 of 50, it means that 50% is oxygen and 50% is air. Uh, when applying FIO2 of 60, 60% is oxygen, 40% is air. So if you see ventilator delivering only air and no oxygen, the amount of oxygen delivered is 21% because uh, air contains 21% of oxygen. So the least effort we can deliver is 21, not below that. And other settings like trigger sensitivity and respiratory rate. Respiratory rate, you will have this option only when you're using the control mode, not the spontaneous mode. These are settings you see common in ICU ventilator. And coming to portable, Mm, ventilators BiPAP or CPAP you see like CPAP terminology CPAP is like you are when you are applying some pressure that pressure is maintained both during inspiration and expiration there is no extra pressure added during inspiration 
So CPAP mode is the same. Whereas in case of BiPAP, the basic uh, modes are S, ST, and T mode. S mode is spontaneous mode, where it supports spontaneous breath. ST mode is both spontaneous and T for timed mode. Like if patient is like a, if I have set a rate of uh, if patient is uh, able to breathe at 12 to 18 per minute, the whole breaths are triggered. But if patient is uh, breathing at set rate below the set rate, like if having breaths only six or eight per minute, in that case the time mode will activate. Like because I have set a minimum rate set of 12, it will give additional breaths. So during time mode, extra breaths are provided, like it functions as control mode. Whereas T mode is full control mode. All breaths are provided by the ventilator only. Other settings are EPAP, expiratory positive air pressure, which is similar to PEEP in ICU ventilator, and IPAP, inspiratory positive air pressure, trigger, and ramp. Ramp is nothing but how fast the setting, like if I have set the pressure support and tidal volume, how fast it is giving that is uh, nothing but ramp. If it is giving slowly, if I set a ramp slowly, then the breath is delivered very slowly. Another setting you can see is the diameter of the circuit. The single lens circuit which are used available in two size 15 mm or 22 mm. So you can change the setting when you are using this portable wipe. <clears throat> Coming to the next slide, the technique of application. This is important from nursing perspective. Always remember that you are connecting a ventilator to the patient and not the other way. What I mean to say is when, the, when the, put the patient in a comfortable position and bring the ventilator to the patient and adjust set, uh, set settings and apply the ventilator to the patient. If the ventilator is very far beyond, don't push patient towards the ventilator. You are connecting the ventilator to the patient, so you have to adjust the ventilator and bring the ventilator close to patient and connect it. But before applying this, explain what you are going to do. This is important. Because uh, imagine when you're sitting in a bed and someone comes and applies some mask with a high pressure, it feels cumbersome. So you tell them there's a, a ventilator with which you are providing some pressure so that it delivers some pressure and it relieves the discomfort which they are having and it also improves the oxygen. First, explain what you are going to do and how it helps them. It relieves the distress, it improves the oxygenation, you will be okay after this, you tell them. After that, uh, usually the settings are set by the doctor or a respiratory therapist. After settings are done, you apply the mask over the face. Don't apply straps now only, just apply a mask over the face and with hands, held, uh, you hold the mask over the face. Let the patient acclimatize to this mask, let him breathe, Wait for one to two minutes. Let them have uh, adjust to the, let them adjust to the ventilator. Once they are acclimatized, now you can apply straps around the face. Be careful that you should not apply too loose or too tight. When you, if you are applying very loosely the straps, the mask is not properly fit to the patient. So that positive pressure which you are applying leaks around the mask and the patient. So that it won't be affected because the gas or the air is escaping around the mask, the effective pressure which you are applying is not delivered to the patient and it will fail. But on the other end, if you are applying very tightly, it will discomfort to the patient and also not over the, over the time of period, like if you are ventilating for a longer duration, then this uh, tight application of mask can leave behind pressure injuries also. Uh, so after applying adequately, you, you can see in this image how to apply. You, as you can see, after application of this strap, you should be able to pass fingers between the patient and the straps. These are uh, adequately fit straps. Hmm. After applying the mask, now don't leave the patient. You need to monitor. You need to check whether the patient is getting acclimatized or feeling discomfort, how he is behaving. And all at the same time, check for any leaks around the uh, mask because ventilator al alarm will trigger and it will show any leaks. So what you need to monitor, you need to monitor saturation after application of NIU, whether there is improvement in oxygenation, always heart rate beefing, is it same or it is dropping or increasing? 
how are the blood pressures and also you need to look at the secretions how the how are secretion or the cooling of secretions any vomiting is there because of the posture pressure ventilation there can be gastric distension and vomiting and not only that in every shift and every day you need to check the pressure points which are usually around the bridge of the nose chin and sides of the head like above the ear these are usually pressure points where you need to monitor in every shift and every day and what about the feeding when you are applying the mask like in a uh, oral nasal mask can we feed the patient now you can um, in acute condition once the condition and acute condition or oxygen has improved and if the niv breaks are tolerated you can disconnect niv to feed the patient and during this time you can supplement oxygen through nasal prongs or face mask depending upon the oxygen requirement and once the feed is done once you have feed don't connect immediately wait for 1 to 2 hours and then restart if indicated again sometimes breaks are tolerated up to 4 to 6 hours where you can wait suppose niv breaks are not tolerated you are not able to feed if you are connect, disconnecting the niv the, pain, the patient is desaturating rapidly then in that case you cannot give breaks for niv so such condition what you need to do is we can put the rail strip and start nasal gastric feed but uh, so till now we know what are the condition how niv will helpful in respiratory failure and what are the condition where it is indicated at the same time you need to know where it is not indicated because in this conditions is not going to helpful and some condition it is actually harmful also so if you see the contraindications like uh, absolute contraindications include facial trauma so in case of facial trauma what happens the facial anatomy and the architecture is disturbed so that the mask won't fit properly over the face because of the swellings or any fractures over the face you are not you are not apply the mask tightly to the face because of the distorted anatomy so that the posture pressure gets leaked from the side so and not effectively reach the patient and also when there is a respiratory arrest as i said usually niv is applied only when the patient has spontaneous breath but in distress if patient is not breathing adequately is in arrest or when there is bradypnea where the respiratory rate is less than 5 in that condition you cannot take a chance with the niv in this respiratory arrest and the cardiac arrest condition you need to intubate and ventilate the patient so these are contraindications for niv similarly patient with a low gcs where the sensorium is very low you cannot take a risk with niv because because sensorium is low they cannot put the airway any secretion which gets pulled in the oral cavity will get aspirated into the lungs so in this conditions also niv is contraindicated now that related to contraindications include hemodynamic instability uh, when the patient is in a shock and requiring any vasopressors to minimal vasopressor support you can uh, give a chance with niv but severe hemodynamic instability patient on double vasopressors then niv is contraindicated similarly if there is any recent esophageal or airway surgeries niv application is not indicated because of the wound deviations which can happen in this uh, post operative period coming to advantages and disadvantages of using niv over invasive ventilation uh, first advantages as the name implies it is a non invasive ventilation you are not invading the airway so because you are not invading airway you are avoiding complications like during intubation any injury to the glottis injury to trachea or pharynx this can be avoided by avoiding intubation and using the niv mode and because you are not intubating and avoiding any invasive ventilation the chances of vap are less with using niv mode niv ventilation and in this uh, in the, when you are in this patients are usually conscious and but in this are but usually conscious and cooperative patient so light sedation or sometimes no sedation is required unlike invasive ventilation uh, patient can bite the tube or there will be very restless you need to sedate the patient whereas in non invasive sedation is not required even if requirement is a light sedation is sufficient not only that uh, the niv ventilation will preserve communication like 
For example, when you are using a nasal mask, their oral cavity is free and they can maintain oral hygiene. They can communicate with the family. They can have food and drinks. These are the advantages of non-invasive ventilation. Coming to disadvantages, uh, as I said, this needs patient cooperation. The patient is not cooperative and if he's very restless, he's removing the mask repeatedly, then uh, there's no point that NIV is going to be helpful in this patient. You need to have good patient cooperation for utilizing this non-invasive pouch pressure ventilation. And not only that, the interface selection should be appropriate, like which ventilator, which circuit, and which type of mask you are using, and the patient selection criteria. You need to have good selection of this equipment and interface so that you can utilize effectively. Otherwise, it is not going to help the patient, and it is going to um, increase the workload only, but not going to help the patient. But and another disadvantage, it can cause claustrophobia. Uh, for example, in case of helmet mask or full face mask, when such high pressures are delivered over the face, the can, patients can be claustrophobic. And one last disadvantage is there is no airway protection. If there are excessive secretions, uh, when you are using non-invasive ventilation, there is no airway protection. They can aspirate these secretions into the lungs. So that is one disadvantage of using non-invasive ventilation. So coming to the complications, so what are the complications? The common or most common is a mass discomfort. If it is not properly attached, if it's applied very tightly, it can cause discomfort to the patient. This is commonly complained when you are using NIV. And the second complication or a side effect, I can say not complication, is a dry mouth. When you're in pouch pressure ventilation, such high pressures going along the airway will dry up the mouth so that you can see patient asking for frequent water when they are on NIV. The third one is a skin rash because of the tight application of the mask. There can be rash developing along the pressure points. In severe conditions over the long term, like the patient is on NIV for long four or five days with the tight application of mask, the skin rash can progress to become pressure source. Just like how you grade a bed sore, you can grade this grade one to four. Four is a very uh, deep pressure sore. And uh, Another complication is gastric distension. Uh, such post pressure ventilation when delivered through uh, NIV mode, some amount of this gas or air can enter into stomach also. Your aim is to deliver into the airway and the lung, but some amount of gas can also escape into the stomach, which causes gastric distension. So it can have nausea or vomiting. And uh, another side effect, or the complication of, uh, of post pressure ventilation is barotrauma, which, which include pneumothorax and the pneumomediastinum. Pneumothorax is nothing but air in the pleura. Normally, air is there only in the lung. The pleura doesn't contain any air because of barotrauma. That is, when you are applying too much high pressure, that can injure the alveoli where air leaks into the pleura, causing pneumothorax. It can leak into mediastinum also, called as pneumomediastinum. And there can be aspiration, eye irritation with high positive pressure ventilation. These are the complications uh, possible with the non-invasive ventilation. Most common is the discomfort and the dry mouth, which you see. Now, this slide, uh, I projected some images which will show about the complications of NIV. As you can see here, uh, there's a skin rash or a grade one pressure, so develop with the tight application of coronasal mask. And in this slide, you can see how bad this pressure sore is with tight application of mask over the nasal bridge. In this slide also, you can see along the pressure points, this uh, pressure sore has developed. This slide will show the pressure injuries which develop around the ear nerve. This along the strap application of strap. So this uh, pressure source you can avoid by using hydrochloride dressing, which I have projected in the previous slide. You can apply this hydrochloride dressing along the nasal bridge up to the chin or along the pressure points. And for preventing pressure sore, for preventing pressure sore in, around the ear, what you can do is use a soft roll or soft card. Uh, you can place this between the strap and the patient's. Uh, for it so that it will bring the injuries. 
so i'm done with the topic we have a few questions here uh, three questions i would like you to post your answers in the chat box we'll first go with the quiz later we will take any questions So the first question: Following conditions in my view is not indicated. A palmar radium, B CFD excitation, C obstructive sleep apnea, D GCS of seven out of fifteen. In which of the conditions in my view is not indicated? Yeah, right. Everyone has answered correctly, right? D. In this condition, because the sensorium is low, if you apply an IV, there is a risk of aspiration. So you cannot go with non-invasive ventilation when the GCS is low. There are other conditions; it is indicated. You can use. Come to second question. So following are the complications of non-invasive ventilation, except in this there is one. One of which is not a complication of non-invasive ventilation. A pressure sore, B gastric distension, C VAP, D claustrophobia. Which of the following is not a complication of NIV? See, yeah, most of you have answered C. That is right because you are not invading an airway, so the chances of developing VAP are less when you are using a non-invasive mode. Uh, gastric distension is possible in non-invasive because some amount of air goes into the stomach, also causing the gastric distension with the non-invasive ventilation. But gastric distension is not seen with an invasive ventilation. to last question following about positive pressure ventilation is false that it can cause pneumothorax it increases work of breathing it improves oxygenation and reduces carbon dioxide levels it is beneficial to left side of the heart which of the following is false about positive pressure ventilation Yeah, right. D is the correct answer. I can see some of you have answered D. Actually, positive pressure ventilation is beneficial to left side of the heart. That is the main indication for using this positive pressure ventilation in case of heart failure, especially when there is left ventricular failure. If you apply this positive pressure ventilation, it will help the patient. It will it will reduce the stress on the heart. In detail, if you can say that it reduces the afterload of the heart also. So it actually decreases work of breathing. That is the purpose which for which you are using a positive pressure ventilation. So the correct answer is B. Uh, okay. So I made these three questions. I am done with the talk. I want ma'am to take over. Okay. Uh, I hope. Uh, uh... Everyone of you have understood what are the basic concepts behind the non-invasive ventilation. Uh, basically, being a nurse, especially when you are doing uh, night shifts, most of the doctors will be busy in taking care of many patients because uh, most of the times so one or two doctors will be uh, on the night shift. So you are the first person who has to respond to the hypoxia or any problem with respiratory uh, emergencies. So here I'm going to uh, repeat the same basics, uh, maybe a few key uh, key areas of non-invasive ventilation, which uh, Dr. Ramakrishna has been described in a detailed manner. Uh, 
So if you look at the purpose of non-invasive ventilation, like any other ventilation, it is to handle the hypoxia. That means to improve the oxygen levels or saturation levels and to facilitate the ventilatory process. That means when patient is having high carbon dioxide levels, initiating a patient on NIV mode uh, or NIV mask or NIV ventilation, it, it facilitates the ventilation and wash out the CO2. The third important advantage of NIV is to relieve the work of breathing. When patient is, is in the respiratory distress, NIV is the first thing uh, that you have to keep the patient on. So coming to the causes of hypoxia, as you all know, the most common cause of hypoxia in the ICU is pneumonia or ARDS. And other, uh, other causes will be congestive heart failure. So pneumonia, ARDS, and congestive heart failure, these two uh, are classical indications of any patient to be initiated on the NI. So when patient is having uh, MI or uh, uh, MI with SOV or uh, heart, failure, heart failure with SOV, you can uh, initiate the patient on NIV. The most important point here is in, in this subset of the patients, initial CPAP will be most uh, beneficial. So applying, giving or some amount of the PEEP with the help of non-invasive ventilation helps to, as uh, Ramakrishna has told in the last question in the quiz, it decreases the workload on the heart and helps, helps to decongest the lungs. It helps to remove the fluid from the lungs. So it relieves the work of the breathing and at the same time improve, it improves the LP function, decreases the workload on the heart and at the same time it improves the oxygenation. Other uh, causes of hypoxia like lung collapse, effusion, or basal atelectasis. And other, the other spectrum of uh, diseases like COPD, bronchial asthma, where patients will retain the CO2, in, in, in those patients, the NIV helps to wash out the CO2. But the main important point while you initiating the COPD patient on the NIV is you have to start with minimal FIO2 levels because these patients are very much sensitive to hyperoxia. So most of these patients are chronically hypoxic. You have to target a saturation of more than 85 or 90 as per your doctor's prescription. The another uh, uh, uncommon cause is chest trauma. When patient is having uh, presented to you with the blunt or penetrating chest trauma with the multiple rib fractures, NIV helps not only to relieve the work of the breathing, in some scenarios where patient is having frail chest, applying the NIV will act like a splint. It also helps to relieve the work of breathing and relieve the pain because of uh, rib fractures. So in case of uh, the conditions causing hypoxia like pneumonia, ARDS, heart failure, collapse, effusion or basal collapse or uh, eclectasis, the conditions where patient retain the CO2 like COPD, neuromuscular weakness and multiple rib fractures where the NIV itself can act like a split. The most important point that you all have to remember is the other important cause of SOB in case of in the ICU patients is severe metabolic acidosis. So in these patients where the SOB is because of the severe metabolic acidosis, NIV is not going to help the, uh, help the patient. So there the treatment of choice is completely different. So if patient is not hypoxic, not retaining CO2, uh, only SOB, you have to look at for the estosis. If the SOB is because of the estosis, do not start the patient on the NIV. Coming to basic settings, whenever you, uh, you have decided to start the patient on the NIV, you have to take care of the minimal, the basic settings, like FIO2. If the problem is hypoxia, start with 100% of NIV. The second setting is P. The minimal P, we have to set 6 to 8 centimeters of the water as per your, uh, your ICU protocol. If patient is having uh, severe hypoxia because of uh, pneumonia or ARDS, we can increase uh, the PEEP to improve the oxygenation. And the second, the third setting is pressure support. Pressure support is to improve the tidal volume and minute ventilation so that the CO2 can be washed out. So blindly or roughly we can say to improve the oxygen level, FIO2 and the PEEP, to decrease the CO2 levels or to facilitate the ventilation process, pressure support. The other two settings are cyclic. Roughly, you can adjust the cycling. Uh, cycling is nothing but the change of respiratory cycle from inspiratory phase to expiratory phase. 
so with the help of uh, cycling you can decide when the uh, uh, when the cycle uh, sorry when the phase changes from inspiration to expiration uh, initially you can start with 20 20 to 25% of the flow that is the basic setting but later on you have to follow your doctor's uh, advice so first you have to start with fio2 p pressure support as per the tidal volume if patient is not able to generate enough tidal volume you can increase the pressure support the fourth setting is cycling cycling you have to set around 20 to 20 5%. The fourth setting, most important one, most of your uh, uh, miss, uh, missing is pressure alarm, like alarm limit for the pressure. You have to set the pressure limit around 35 to 40 centimeters of the water. Unless you set that pressure limit, patient may not be able to generate the adequate tidal volume. So the NIV sometimes can be harmful if you don't adjust the pressure limit. So these are the basic settings. Contraindications. Uh, very much uh, detailedly uh, discussed. Of course, when patient is uh, having deep coma, low GCS, uh, starting a patient on NIV will, uh, will increase the chance of uh, aspiration. When the, to initiate NIV, the willingness of the patient is very much important. The cooperation of the patient is very much important. So when patient is very much agitated, non-willing, uh, maybe he's, he must be having some psychiatric illness or uh, hyper hyperactive delirium. So in such scenarios, when there is no patient cooperation, the high chance of NIV failure. So in such scenario, you have to look for other alternatives. And intestinal obstruction is the main contraindication for uh, non-invasive ventilation. Post uh, gut surgery, for example, patient underwent uh, intestinal dissection and anastomosis or some surgery on the esophagus, uh, esophagus in such scenarios, we have to avoid NIV. And the patient is having severe respiratory distress, impending respiratory arrest. In, so in such scenario, don't waste the time by keeping patient on NIV. So directly inform the doctor, call the doctor saying that it's an uh, emergency, patient is having severe respiratory distress, is sweating, tachycardia, severely hypoxic, saturation of less than 70 or 60, having hemodynamic compromise. In such scenario, don't attempt NIV directly. The patient requires invasive ventilation. So don't waste time. Uh, by starting up uh, NIV and uh, setting the uh, settings on the ventilator. And when there are issues with interface, interface is nothing but any problem with the occlusion. Is there any facial fractures or uh, most of the elderly uh, persons will not be having teeth. So, edentulous. So, in such scenario, there will be high chance of the leak. If there is a leak, NIV is going to fail. In such scenarios, we have to look for other alternative uh, method to, to ventilate the patient. And make sure that because the all advanced uh, modes of the so advanced generation of the ventilator, they are maintaining invasive and non invasive modes separately. So, before initiating a patient on the NIV, make sure that the ventilator has been switched over to the NIV mode from the invasive mode. So this is the uh, main uh, practical point most of nurses are missing in our day-to-day -day practice. Complications, of course, you must have understood and the most of your excellent answered in the quiz. Coming to humidification. Uh, humidification, as of now, there are no standard guidelines or standard consensus statement uh, stating that all the patients on the NIV requires humidification. But personally, we feel uh, when patient is requiring NIV for a prolonged time, as we are giving uh, dry gases with high flows and high pressures, patient has to be on the uh, humidification, some, some amount of the humidification. Of course, there are arguments uh, saying that as we are not bypassing the natural humidification pathway, well, on the NIV, humidification, the active humidification or humidification assistance is not required. But as per your ICU protocol, follow the follow the humidification practices. But uh, from our personal experience, we suggest to use humidification with the, uh, in the mode of HME filter. And how to increase the success rate. So as I told you, the, select the patient. The patient's selection should be proper. So you look for any contraindications. If there are any contraindications, avoid keeping those patients on the NIV. And before keeping NIV, you have to counsel the patient. Take the consent of the patient, like verbal consent. You have to explain what is happening with him or her. What, what are you going to do uh, on them? 
and how to be in synchrony with the ventilator the breathing given by the machine and if patient is agitated uh, uh, panic you can use a mild dose of sedation like iv dexamethasone this is our common practice when patient is having delirium or agitated we start them on minimal dose of dexamethasone and we can start the patient on niv it's uh, very much uh, helpful for the smooth ventilatory process and close monitoring even though you were starting starting the patient on niv don't take it as a granted thing that the co2 levels or oxygen levels are going to improve you have to be uh, keen or vigilant uh, about the patient and about the other uh, areas like leaks you have to check for the leaks uh, at uh, regular intervals and avoid any disconnection of the ventilator like uh, any other patient who is on the invasive ventilation and should have a pre fixed targets after starting the niv you have to look for whether oxygen or saturation levels are improving or not whether heart rate is coming down or not or is there any adverse events like pneumodynamic compromise and uh, uh, and work of breathing is the respiratory rate is coming down or not even after starting the niv if oxygenation is not improving if blood pressure is going down if heart rate is increasing so there is high likelihood of patient is going to uh, fail the niv requires emergency intubation so you should have a pre fixed targets uh, when to uh, terminate the niv and when to take the help of a doctor so once you start the patient on niv you have to do all these parameters and inform to the doctor hope uh, we are clear and we are ready to take questions any questions uh, you can uh, post in the ch chat box uh, we are going to clarify your uh, doubts i think there are no uh, questions so we can um, conclude the session thank you thank you very much for the patient listening uh, anyway the, the video is going to be on the facebook uh, i think continuously you can uh, make use of the video thank you very much and uh, uh, we, we thank iscc once again for this opportunity